All right. Thanks everyone for joining uh, today. And I'm really excited to talk to you a little bit about a project that I've been working on with uh, one of my colleagues uh, in Houston. So my name is Nathan Smith. I am a philosophy instructor and the OER coordinator at Houston Community College. Presentation I'm giving here is, is kind of a version of a presentation that I gave with my colleague, Tanja Connerly from uh, uh, San Jacinto College about starting a local consortium in Houston. So uh, basically, um, in 2017, Tanja and I were both OER coordinators, and she came up with this idea that we needed to do something local to help facilitate sort of this, the education and sharing of resources around OER in the Houston area. And so she kind of did a lot of the legwork uh, and phone calling and sort of reaching out to folks. And to give you an idea of kind of what that took, um, we started conversations in about fall of 2017 with a few people who were leading OER uh, initiatives on their campuses. And then she began reaching out to colleges and universities throughout Houston. And we were able to convene a group of you know close to 10 different colleges and universities in June 2018. So that took several months to kind of get coordinated, but then we had our first meeting um, at, at Houston Community College. Um, so we started kind of naturally, uh, just kind of organically, Tanj and I were leading it, of, uh, but we, we eventually settled on a meeting structure. Um, we hold meetings uh, quarterly on the last, Last Tuesday of, of the month, um, every uh, so four times a year. Um, the basic structure is that we share resources and best practices. We try to support institutions in meeting their OER goals. So we had a big sort of uh, mission and goal uh, uh, sort of workshopping process that we went through where we identified OER goals for every institution. Um, a lot of times we have a guest speaker, we do updates, and then we have a member presentation. Um, we had been meeting in person and we would rotate locations among the institutions. The host institution would provide lunch, we'd meet over lunch. And um, well, of course, now we're meeting virtually, but basically the same format. Our current membership is uh, 12 institutions in the Houston area, so it's really grown. And um, we have a lot of institutions who are kind of further along in the process, but a lot who are brand new to OER and just learning about uh, what OER is. And so there's a lot of sort of mentoring and sharing of resources that goes on. It's a really diverse group. We're super fortunate in Houston to be surrounded by so many different uh, colleges and universities. One of the big things that I think if you were to do something like this, and I do encourage folks to really think about it because I think um, local organizations and face-to-face -face interaction is really important in terms of building um, just the resources and knowledge that's necessary to, to have a good OER program and to, to understand what open licensing is all about. But one of the things that we realized we needed was some governance structure to make this happen. So uh, we've sort of, we drafted bylaws and adopted those last year. Um, some key things that we had to go through were a mission statement. What is our goal? What is our membership and how do we vote? Who are the officers? What's our meeting schedule? We, just, we decided that the primary focus of the organization is around meetings and sharing information. As we, we developed, we, did, we, we realized we wanted a website. And so we began a, a subcommittee that developed a web presence and we now have a, have a website. Of course, one of the things that comes with building a website is you have to host that website and there's a small fee that's associated with that. And so one of that has actually pushed some further decisions. Um, we have now needed to start collecting some funds and we're trying to figure out sort of what a what cost structure makes sense. You know, do we need to incorporate as a nonprofit? Um, and so those kinds of questions are now on the table. And it's it's just interesting to see that progression, you know, as you start, as you want to do certain activities, it may require uh, the addition of certain governance structures to support that. But the coolest thing about all of this is that we have had the opportunity to connect with uh, local Houston and, and county and also state organizations 
that are doing OER work and spreading um, uh, sort of information about OER. And probably um, some, I would just hi highlight a couple of things. We've got, we are in contact with the city of Houston education department, the Harris County education department. They've sent representatives to a couple of our meetings. So we are in coordination with them. We've got a group, uh, an advocacy group of students called the Young Invincibles, which are uh, sort of DACA recipients who are, who have kind of, who, who lobby on behalf of, um, of immigrants and um, who don't have uh, uh, sort of um, citizenship status in the United States. And, um, but the big thing that we're doing this year is we are hosting a local conference called Open Texas 2021 in partnership with Digitex and the Texas Digital Libraries. So the Digitex is a consortium of community colleges in, in Texas. And, um, and that opportunity really came about because we had an on the ground organization that was able to support uh, a, a, a sort of regional or statewide conference. So I wanna leave uh, y'all with a couple of links and I'll drop these into the chats, but these are member testimonials you, that are on YouTube, just a few minutes long. You can hear some of our members talk about the impact that the organization has had on their programs at their institutions. And of course, I'll leave you with my uh, contact information and I'll throw a link to the, um, to the website in the chat as well so you can see what we're up to. That website is still kind of developing, but um, it has a basic structure and some things, some information that might be useful to you. But uh, that is about it. Excellent, you. thank you, Nathan. And I was waiting for you to say you all. I'm so glad you said it at the end of the free presentation. <laughs> uh, the floor is open, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have mm -hmm. two minutes for Q&A. Feel free to type in the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask your question. I'm seeing loads of comments in the chat, so I'm going to try to get through them a little bit and see if I can uh, respond to anything here. Okay, so it looks like that was... Okay, thanks, Nate. Cool. I hope this is helpful to you. Um, I, I would stress um, just figuring out what it is that your local organization is about, and then um, start getting folks together and um, making uh, decisions um, in a kind of uh, democratic process. Um, so hopefully that um, is the way to go. And I, I, eventually you do need a governance structure. I mean, so some kind of bylaws or um, uh, um, or uh, some other written uh, governance structure like officers, um, voting process. I mean, uh, you have to look out for sort of how long term, how will the organization sustain itself? I was really excited this summer when we had our first election, and now we have a new president and vice president. So Tanja and I were able to hand off the reins to someone else. And, uh, and, and that sort of thing isn't possible if you don't have um, some written bylaws or some other structure that uh, can, can sustain the organization beyond the founders.